Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I'm actually really excited. I'm unfortunately not in Helsinki, but Hesam, who's here with me, is, and he's going to run us through our demo for that we've prepared for Slush, but also a few other observations. And obviously, we'll be looking at the comments. So if you have any questions, do keep them coming. I'll do my best to read them out loud and ask your questions as they come in. And with that, I'm actually already handing it over to Hesam to walk us through what we've prepped for Slush. Yeah, thanks, thanks very much, Kathleen. So I'm here at Slush today in the very cold sling, uh, Helsinki. Uh, this morning we had a, uh, we woke up to minus 10 degrees and snow, which is a pretty nice shock. We we're a pretty good way to wake you up in the early, early morning. Um, yeah, we're at Slush today and tomorrow. It's uh, definitely one of my favorite events. And I don't say this lightly because oftentimes these business events can be very dry and boring. But, you know, I, what I hear mostly from people attending that slush is very different. It's almost looks like a like an indoor playground for grown-ups to some to some extent, but you know, with lots of cool companies and startups and also some of the uh, uh, speakers that unfortunately I haven't been able to listen to too many too many today. Uh, just really really interesting. And uh, yeah, we have we have our booth here, so you can see our in the background. Uh, we've been uh, speaking with uh, probably several hundred people who drop by our booth today, which was really really surprising i actually uh worked through all of my all of my business cards uh i have printed printed out around where it is what how many do i left yeah i just like there's like couple 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 left which is really surprising i thought i would not give out business cards the, these days but uh yeah it's been just really interesting to speak with uh um developers founders uh investors some also some large enterprises uh, we, we just we just come off the discussion came off a discussion with uh, uh, an airline exec executive where they are really, really trying to figure out uh, what they can do you know to to uh, to do their part in their in their sustainability journey knowing that obviously planes and air travel is a major contributor to greenhouse gases and uh, was really interesting to understand how they're looking at it you know from a position of having a lot of uh, focus on them, both from uh, regulators and consumers. Uh, yeah, so it just, it's going to be interesting. I think well, I will go to bed early tonight to try and really di digest all that info information and uh, all, the, all the inputs. Um, yeah, well, maybe we'll just switch to some of the, what, what we're here today for. Um, we thought um, for the events that we hear at Slush, so, so tomorrow actually at 10 o'clock, we're going to be on stage, on the startup stage to actually uh, speak about our solution and actually demonstrate what we have so that people get a good better understanding about uh, you know, what can be what cl climate can be used for and um, what are the things they can do and, and, and uh, what time is the talk because there is a live stream so if people want to join yeah, you on I, the stage when is it yeah so it's going to be local time at 10 30 and uh, okay. we're going to be on the on the startup startup stage I'm not 100% sure if that's, that stage is going to be live stream, but uh, I know that two other stages were live stream today. And um, definitely tune out, tune into the YouTube channel for Slush and to see if it's there. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be around 10, 10.30 local time, Helsinki. And uh, I think for uh, Central European time, it's going to be 9.30? Yes. I'm not sure. Yeah, it was just, there's, there's a slight time, time difference. And yeah, and so, and so for that, we prepared a little uh, a short video uh, to kind of walk through how the product looks like, what would it look like if you if you were to if you were to actually use it, how would the sign up look like? You know, I, just, I mean, generally what we're trying to show like how easy it is to get to get started. That you really don't need to know that much, and to uh, really uh, is is very quick. You just you know with a couple of clicks, you create create an account and get can get started very very quickly to to try it out. And uh, yeah, so we have this video uh, prepared, and we'll be happy to go through it today. With, with every, everybody uh, walk you through it to see how what it, what it looks like. And of course, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, uh, definitely feel free to use the comment section or reach out to us through email. We'll be happy to go through it. Um, so I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy to jump into it, Kathleen, if, you, if you're ready. Right. Let's go, video's on. Let's, let's do it. So, so before we jump into it, so I just want to mention like, a couple of things. So we, we're going to be looking at this video um, at, at a couple of stuff. So first of all, we're going to see uh, uh, what the account creation looks like. So uh, obviously, uh, as I'm, we mentioned previously, that the Climatic, uh, Climatic uh, platform is available as a beta, so you can sign up for, for free, 
create your, create your project. We're going to also show how what the database looks looks like and what the process looks like when you're actually looking for a very specific emission factor for your, for your use case. And also the next step is to actually building that API query and how the code looks like and how simple it is actually to, to build that. Because sometimes you think about you know, APIs and you know, developing these kind of uh, code. And uh, we actually want to show you like actually a lot of that is, uh, is actually taken care of within our developer central. We actually have a lot of code samples that can be easily, easily copy, copied over to, to, get, to help you get, st get started. Um, and yeah, so maybe we'll just jump into it. And, and also lastly for the demo today, uh, trying to make it a bit more specific, uh, perhaps a bit more in interesting because we're, so because we're in Helsinki, we're going to kind of pretend that we are measuring uh, activities here in Finland. And of course, Finland is just because we're here, but obviously uh, I think here the point is to show that we actually cover, we actually have data across many different countries, both in Europe, Asia, United States, and Asia as well. And, uh, and yeah, and you know, we're trying to pretend that we are at Slush and we want to measure some footprint activities, maybe, maybe even for this, for this event. All right, so let's get started. Um, so as, 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 as I mentioned previously, you can easily sign up. Uh, it's a self-serve portal. You, you create your credentials, you create a project, you name it, and you get your API key. So, so far, it's pretty straightforward, nothing surprising, and it, and it, it happens very quickly. With your API key in place, uh, the next step is to really get yourself familiarized with the API doc documentations. Uh, so you can easily click over to the API's uh, reference page where we are collecting you know, a lot of information about uh, how the API looks like, what are the different ways the queries can be used, what are different parameters that can be used, the various uh, units that we support, and uh, you can obviously also find code samples. And when you, when you find your, your specific a API endpoint, the first step is to then head over to our uh, database to look for a specific emission factor for the project that you, or the, for the activities you're looking to try. And here, as, as you mentioned, since we are in Finland, we are pretending that we're looking for electricity data um, in Finland. Uh, so you can use the search on, on the left-hand side to filter it out. Uh, you find the, the specific endpoint uh, for Finland. You copy that over. Again, very, you know, as so far, I don't know, we've we spent probably around 40 seconds and we already gone halfway. And, uh, you know, with that emission factor copied, you head over and start actually putting together that API uh, composing that API query. You know, we showed you the code sample at the, at the beginning. You copy that over. You enter the emission factor idea, and you try it to see if it works. And here you see, bam, it just works. You enter some of the units to test to if it actually works. And uh, the next step is just to basically just repeat. So obviously, you can track many various different activities in parallel. So you can obviously also here in this example, we're looking at train travel, but it really, this is going to be any, any activity that has um, emission, emission associated with it. And the process is similar. Uh, you're looking at the API docs, you find the emission factor, you try it out, you compose in that API, you test it. And let's see if this one works. I'm, I have a suspicion that it will work. And you see that the API will uh, based on the input you gave, give back that the corresponding uh, kilogram of CO, CO2e. So that's pretty much it. And you know, when you're feeling confident, you just integrate that code into your solution, you deploy it. And really what happens next is that the API will run in the background in real time and track those events as they come in. So if, for example, if you're connected to a smart meters, uh, you will be able to read off that input if you're connected to a ticket booking ticketing booking system. Every time a ticket for a for a train trip is booked, you can get that data and automatically convert it in that. Uh, so I, as I saw, it's actually really really quick. And as I mentioned, uh, that we are covering many different use use cases. Uh, here we looked at electricity and train, but obviously you can track many many different things today. We are. A database currently holds around 1,500 em emission factors and is going by a couple of hundred every week. So this is really a, uh, a, an ongoing effort for us to enable more and more use cases for our customers. Uh, so for example, other things you can measure are flights, uh, cloud computing, um, waste management, water, water usage, 
and actually a lot of lot of different activities. So if you're interested, just definitely head head over to climatic.io, take take a look at our database and familiarize 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 yourself with it. And uh, yeah, let us know let us know what you think. If you have any specific questions, uh, reach out to us here in the chat and or directly um, to the LinkedIn comments or or email. I will be happy to happy to help you. We can hear in your voice that it's been a long day. Yes, um, thank it you is, for uh, that. I think I'm probably on you know a five percent on my battery in terms of the voice, but yeah. <laughs> But th this is like one thing that I take away from this, like this was fun stuff is the tech is super easy, right? But like there's, there's a lot of work that goes into making it comprehensive. Do you want to say a bit more about what's in the database right now and like what is covered in, in those categories and how we go about that? Yeah, definitely. So as I mentioned, the database is, they can be found on, out under um, uh, climatic.io. Um, it's it's open, so it's publicly available. So you can just head head over and actually review this data, look at the filters. Uh, we are currently we hold around 1,500 emission emission factors. I think last week was just above 1,300 something. Yeah, so it's growing every time I I update it. And this data has been reviewed by our in-house climate climate data scientists. So we actually look into every single data point before we make it public because we want to make sure. That is there is the accurate uh, models that we are that we are making public and available, and the use cases we cover now is around energy, uh, transportation, travel, uh, waste and water water management. We also offer in cloud cloud computing data. So if you are an IT company and have a lot of servers running on AWS, Google Cloud Compute uh, Cloud Platform, or Microsoft Azure, you can actually be able to measure their uh, so associated carbon intensity. And uh, what else am I forgetting? Let me just check. What makes you excited about this project? Like, what's so unique about this approach in demoing it than to all the other carbon solutions that you've seen out there? I think what's, what has been resonating with people who came out and spoke, spoke with us today, that how flexible this is. So uh, what we hear often is that they have, uh, that those companies have some very specific needs that they want to, they want the challenges that they are, that they are struggling with specific to the sectors, specific to the, the regions and sometimes it's regulations that are you know, asking for certain type of reporting. And they oftentimes struggle to use some of those end-to-end -end solutions where there's something is missing or doesn't really fit with their requirements. And this kind of a building block solutions that we're offering gives them that flexibility so that it actually build whatever whatever they need. And sometimes those things can happen in parallel, that you know, that the several different tools can be used in parallel. And I think that's where it really the power the power we see coming from. The second part I'm really excited about is also something that uh, we heard today is that when we don't have a certain specific data point that uh, a customer user wants, the process to make it available is very, very simple. You know, so this, we're not talking about months of research or, you know, this, this, this could take a couple of days, maybe a, maybe a week. Uh, we, we spoke with a potential user today that was asking for something very specific in, uh, in uh, a fuel. Uh, so it was like a particular type of fuel that they're, 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 they're using and they're developing. And then they wanted to, you know, put, potentially use our API. And obviously we looked at our database and we didn't have that data. And they mentioned, oh, we, we are, you know, we have access to that data. We know what it is. Could you just make it, make, make, make that available to us? And we say, yeah, this is actually, a, we have a process in place. It will go through a review process, internal review process, where we make sure that it's checking all the, all the boxes that is accurate, is reasoned, and is applicable to the, uh, to the particular use case. And with that, it will go live, and everybody will, will, will have access to it. So I think that kind of a... Uh, collaborative and open approach really enables us to make sure that we we solve each problem only once. Uh, so when we solve that for that one customer, basically anybody else across the world that are using that particular, the ones that particular data, will have that available to them on it. Uh, and so that yeah. speed and that kind of a, a velocity that we can create is something that really excites me. I love the, the phrase, we solve the problem only once and it's available for everyone. We actually have a question from Ellen Marshall on LinkedIn, who's asking whether the database is also going to cover food in the future. And uh, I think we've gotten good news on that. Yeah. So actually, uh, this morning we have, within 10 minutes that we, we set up, we actually had three people who came by and like asked for uh, food and our, our agriculture specific data points. Uh, 
and you know we definitely see something that we heard before and it's definitely something that we have on our, on our roadmap we don't have exact um, uh, uh, date in mind but as i mentioned with everything else in terms of data this is this happens very quickly and you know we're adding several hundred emission factors almost on a weekly, weekly basis. And agriculture and food is on that, on that list. Uh, we're actually currently working on something very, very exciting uh, around scope three data, uh, which we happy to speak. Uh, I don't know if we can announce it today, but maybe in the, in the, in the, in, in the coming days, but we are really looking to make, to open up a, a big chunk of data that uh, emission, emission factors around scope three and spend base uh, methodology that we had lots of lots of requests from, and uh, and I think af after that the next thing would probably be agriculture, food, because we really think, you know, the the variety of data and the comprehensiveness would is really something that really stands out with with, with our approach, and um, if there's anyone listening today uh, and has a particular data that they would like to use and maybe they have access to certain to certain data. Please do reach out with us. Reach out to us because we do have those collaboration with some of our customers and partners where we are working purely on data. Uh, sometimes these are researchers, in institutions that have developed this. Sometimes these customers who are work with consultants or maybe internally to develop some data and actually don't want to necessarily keep it private to themselves. They actually want to share it and really enable the competitors or the rest of the industry to make use of it. So definitely reach out to us if, if that's something you're considering. Yeah, and I mean, that's also the, the call to action as in, right, the more data we share and the more is available for everyone, the faster we understand our impact and can actually drive climate action, right? So that's the the basis for, for acceleration of uh, tackling the climate crisis. That for sure is great. And I think we can say that in the in the spend-based uh, data, even though it's, it's going to be a proxy, food will be covered as one... Uh, component to that. You're very welcome, um, Marshall <laughs> Allen. Um, and yeah, so I think with, with that, if there are no other questions, I currently don't see anything else coming in. Um, if you have any closing comments on how you feel about Slush and what you're going to do tomorrow during your demo, feel free. Otherwise, I think it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for walking us through it. Thanks. Thanks, Kathleen. Yeah, I will be, I will be going to bed early today uh, and hopefully wake up with a lot, lot more energy. We have a uh, Another really exciting day ahead, ahead of us tomorrow. Unfortunately, we won't have our booth today, so uh, but give us more time to actually speak, to attend some of, some of those events. Um, yeah, there's actually several other uh, startups and companies in the, in the same area that we're in, uh, some of them from Europe, some of them from elsewhere, so we're definitely going to catch up with them and you know, find to, to see if there, is, that, that there are ways that we can collaborate because I think at the end of the day, we're all working towards the same goal. Absolutely. And we have Philip, who's there with you today, uh, joining us tomorrow to actually share some on what he learned and what both of you learned from those conversations with yep. uh, collaborators, competitors, potential clients. So if you didn't get enough of that today, we have more for you tomorrow. So do join us. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you, Hassam. Sleep well. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.